Welcome to Speedway. I'm your host, Steve Erisman. Today we're at Speedway Indoor Karting. Sarah, thanks for taking the time to sit with us and tell us a little bit about Speedway Indoor Karting. Thank you very much. So, obviously, it's always a question I ask, but this is kind of a silly one. What prompted you to build in Speedway? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so our, our vision, uh, my husband and I, Andy, um, our vision was sort of combined with our racing team partner, <laughs> Wink Hartman, and all the way back in 2011, um, at the end when he joined our team as a, as a, as a naming partner for the Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing, we wanted to expand the team into a facility that could accommodate two, two teams uh, properly. And uh, in looking around the area for those opportunities, uh, I showed Wink you know, the, the expansion and the redevelopment commissions um, sort of focus here on Main Street and he he was so excited and uh, he gave us the opportunity to build the race shop uh, a couple doors down which is where Ed Carpenter Racing is at now and um, just being in that build process and being able to build that racing facility for Wink and for our race team uh, those those first couple years with Joseph was just an awesome opportunity to see what Main Street is truly like and um, so when my husband Andy and I decided to build a go-kart facility, <laughs> um, it actually started way before that, the idea, the concept. When we heard about the potential for a big retail shop to go in just at the corner uh, there, 465 and Crawfordsville Road, we heard a rumor that there would be kind of a little go-kart section uh -huh. in there. And it was at the time when I had just uh, given birth to my second child. and. So I was very emotional and said, no, Speedway is my town, darn it, and it's going to be us that put the karting center in. So, um, you know, we, we went to the Redevelopment Commission and said, here's our idea. It's going to be first class. It's top of the line. We're going to add a restaurant so that, you know, the likes, people that want to see racing, get involved in it, uh, can be a part of it, but they don't have to drive. They can come in and get ingrained in our sport as well. So who designed the track? It was mutual. It was a team effort, uh, as was this whole build process. So uh, there, there was, um, there was a, big, a big team that did this. So my husband and I, my husband started it. Um, then his brother Kyle helped out quite a bit. Uh, they gave it to me, and I said, okay, I'm a woman. I'm going to spend a lot more money, right? <laughs> <laughs> so then we, we brought some uh, modules in to elevate it. We sunk the oval and brought it forward so people could see it uh, that weren't carting because those people are very important to us as well as the actual drivers. Um, and then um, Casey O'Gara from, from the race team came and he helped us uh, design the oval when we were putting it in. And then um, Rocky Pacuni, he's another one of our managers, he came in and helped us design the timing and scoring software that runs the facility, so that was very helpful. And uh, Danny Klotz is another one of our members, he's helped us with the layout of the carts on pit lane. So it's really been just a team effort. So the road course is 14 turns and it has two levels to it. So uh, it has a couple different technical elements to it that most tracks do, uh, which was important to us to be able to, to integrate those uh, along you know, sweeping straightaways so that people have time to rest their hands and their grip, right? Um, it's not all just windy, windy. Um, and on the second level, it comes down into a 180 degree turn that goes underneath the track and comes back around into some S's and then a carousel that raises you back up uh, to the second level. So it's actually a pretty neat little road course. The oval is give or take 14 degrees, um, and it's a sunken banked oval, so it's sunk into the ground, actually, inside the building, and it's um, right just next to pit lane, so people can see into it. We've actually built a catwalk mezzanine that walks out to the oval, so the two tracks operate simultaneously. Uh, you don't have to stop one track to work the other, and as a result, on that mezzanine, you can go out and, and watch the whole facility. Uh, so the viewership that's here, the, the, the visitors outside of driving the carts can get involved and be a part of that 3D experience. Take pictures, do whatever uh, you want to be able to capture the moment of whoever's in the go-kart. So it was important for us to get them involved as well. So tell us, how did you choose these carts? I'm sure there's several manufacturers. That one, again was a team team decision. Um, you know, I really rely on my people. They're very important. And uh, my husband Andy and his brother Kyle, they went to Italy. Uh, they went to Slovenia to visit the vendors who were going to have help us with this project. And in that visit, they went to the CRG factory, CRG Carts. It's an Italian brand. Um, and so, you know, having run with the Delara family yeah. for so long, you know, <laughs> we really love the Italian culture. So. Uh, they went to visit Mr. Tanini, who owns CRG, and um, they visited the factory, which is it's actually bigger than Delara USA. So, um, karting is very important in Europe, and it's very popular. And you know, we they really felt 
you know, the importance um, of the customer service and, and all those things in that CRG visit. So um, we're the first real location that CRG has um, done a big solid fleet like this. So uh, we're sort of a test pilot for them, um, but it's been really important to work with them on that. And, and we feel like um, that's been a great partnership so far. In walking around, I know she has sponsors on some of your carts. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, we come from the racing world, so we're always about branding and sponsorship. And um, certainly, we've had some great partners already come on board. So it's been it's been neat to wrap a couple carts like we did the Indy cars. <laughs> yeah, and talking about electronics, I know there's a timing system on the track. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. So the timing system is a very sophisticated piece for, for this application for a, a go-kart track. Um, but it, it was important to us because it integrated with your smartphone. So there's an app that ties to Facebook and it shows you live timing and scoring. So if you're in heat race 55 and heat race 52 is out there, you know approximately when it's time to come to pit lane just by looking at the app. Wherever you are in the world, you can see that live timing and scoring. So if you're checked in on Facebook or your friend checked in, you can see how fast he or she is going. So um, there's some uh, great technology that we've worked into the into the track. And there's a um, track record fast timing loop that's coming up. and. Uh, Joseph holds the track record on the road course right now, so he's been bugging me about having that go up and go live. Um, but it's, it's a really neat piece, for sure. So actually, if you post that, you can't lie about your time. Exactly. It's not. It's, it's honest to God right there on the website. So uh, we're excited about that piece, and we're excited that it gives us an extra uh, ability to communicate with our customers. So how old do you have to be to drive a cart? So I started go-karts when I was five. Um, unfortunately, they don't make... The, these kind of carts that fit a five-year-old. Um, that's kind of a custom process. As being a girl, I'm a lot shorter. But So our, our carts are for eight years and older right now uh, to the general public. 48 inches is about the height that you need to be to, f to properly fit the cart. Um, you know, if it's, a, it's, if it's a USAC kid that's run quarter midgets and he's under the age of eight or she is and, and she's, you know, at the height that she fits, then we're going to try that and see how it works. You know, it's it's, uh, the idea is to allow the kids in our community to, to get involved in racing. They're curious and they want to they wanna get involved. So I'm not going to turn them away because they're an inch too short. Uh, what does it cost to race here? So it's a one-time license fee of $10 that covers your helmet, your insurance, all those great dandy things. And then on the oval and the road course is two different price points. So $20 on the road course and $15 on the oval for peak hours. And then if you're off peak hours, like before five on weekdays, uh, there's a little bit of a price break. Then there's packages that drop the prices down if you buy more than one race. So if you bring a group in, you can get a little better rate. Exactly, yes. So when we come through the door, what's the first thing we do? A lot of people come through the door and they see the windows because the viewership's <laughs> awesome to be able to see the track and the wow factors there. Uh, but then you'll turn around and you'll see the registration desk. So if you didn't have time to go on our app and download it and register through our app prior to getting here, uh, but if you didn't have time to do that, that's fine. We have a couple kiosks here that you can register through um, and tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, why you came in, your name, your date, your birthday, and then you'll sign a waiver that says, hey, I know it's go-kart <laughs> racing, you know. Um, and then as soon as you're done with that, then you'll sign up for some races and pay for your experience and they'll put you in a heat race. You'll go into the video room, you'll watch a short three and a half minute video about sort of the rules of the track. Uh, you'll immediately turn around and, and find a helmet that fits. Uh, we have several sizes and options that uh, Bell Helmets provided us with. And as soon as you do that, you'll come out to pit lane and you'll be ready to go. So you do have a restaurant hooked to the go-kart track. So tell us a little more about the restaurant. So the restaurant, um, 1911 Grill, some people leave out the first one, but that one is really important because uh, 1911 was the first year, first automobile race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And if you look in our logo, you can see the Marmon Wasp in there. And it's, it's really important for us to have that throwback tradition um, to the Speedway. And we carry that motif into the restaurant. So uh, the visualization, the tradition, it's sort of a, an atmosphere that's um, uh, very relaxed, very casual, but also has some very neat murals um, of some of the historical uh, moments in time at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Um, so for us, it wasn't all about you know the jazzy pub atmosphere, <laughs> even though Andy and I you know were part of that crowd too. Um, we wanted to have a lot of that classy you know imagery from in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So the food at 1911 Grill is is um, also just an American cuisine. There's um, 
different off offerings in all different categories. So appetizers, sandwiches, um, some pizza options, dinner entrees, sandwiches. So it's it's a good variety. Um, anything from some fried pickles to some great sandwiches like a turkey Reuben that the chef does excellent to um, some great pastas and a wonderful checkered black and blue salad to uh, some great pizzas. So we have a variety of American cuisine. It's It's been great to have food um, you know, kind of that food service added to our family, um, the O'Gara family is yes. what I married into. <laughs> you know, there's such a huge Irish Catholic family on the south side, and uh, my mother and father-in-law own the O'Gara's Irish pub there in Beech Grove. So, uh, when we started the restaurant and, and started this whole facility, uh, Jean and John were so important to helping us get that get that off the ground. All the sort of the basic like works that you know kids don't know when they get into a new business, and you know Jean's here every day, John's here just about every day. So. They've been really helpful too. And you make people feel right at home. You have a gentleman that greets people at the door and takes them to their table and really spends some time with them. We, we people, the attention to detail is it's important, you know. And I think it's important from the go kart side. You know, people need to feel um, comfortable in the carts. They need to have the attention that you know it's not just throw you in and let you figure it out, <laughs> right? We want to be make sure that um, you know people have at least a comfort level with what they're doing so that they can enjoy. Um, the go-kart drive. And the same thing applies in the restaurant. If you're not comfortable, if, if you don't know a couple details about what it is you're ordering or why you're there or what the experience is about, um, then you know it really doesn't make sense. So customer service is very important to us. Obviously, if you sit in the restaurant, which I've done, you can also look out and see the track. Yeah. I mean, it, it was important when I talk about that viewership of being on like the catwalk and the mezzanine and you know when you sit in the restaurant, if you don't want to go go-karting, you can, you can see r the race cars and um, you can really get involved with the racing. So the first level, the restaurant isn't as much uh, the viewership. There's a couple windows there, but the second level has some window opportunities uh, where you can have a table like next to uh, to look out and see the kart racing. So uh, it was nice for families that have kids or you know other folks that are racing that want to just go and, and grab a table and have a glass of wine or have a nice salad or, or whatever. Uh, Todd Howard, the chef that we hired to come in, uh, has been the GM and has really put that uh, that whole program together from staffing um, to design to the whole way that the restaurant flows. And as far as uh, the atmosphere, Andy and I had a vision for what it, we wanted it to look like and what people, we wanted people to experience there. And Todd has done a wonderful job of, of putting that into place. And if I've got a group that I want to bring down, have you got a place for them? Absolutely. You know, we, we thought it would be really neat to see some of the team building that goes on with the with go-karting and then having the restaurant be able to cater to those groups. So uh, we have a corporate room upstairs that has all the audio video needs you'll ever want, um, <laughs> really some high definition, nice projector things and screens and uh, every room is tablet controlled, so that's nice. Uh, our big room can seat about 120 comfortably. Um, and then we have a little room off to the side that's more of like a banquet room or a small like small party or room, so like birthday parties or meetings that hold about that holds about 30. And what hours are you open here? So we open at 11. Both facilities open at 11, and uh, the carting center closes at 10 on weekdays and 11 on weekends, Friday and Saturday. And then the restaurant stays open an hour later. Uh, we've been very thankful that people are gracious in giving us some time to figure things out. You know, we're we're um, we're definitely striving to do the best job we can for that customer experience. And you know, as we grow, there's opportunities that we have to, you know, give different programming formats to our customers, whether that's leagues or you know junior karting leagues and schooling opportunities and private lessons, those types of things, as well as growing the menu in the restaurant, you know. You know, I, I think this community is so important. They, um, the, the town of Speedway supports, you know, the most Im important part of, of my life. <laughs> you know, this, this great race and the 100th running is such a special uh, moment for us. And as a community, they truly have embraced that opportunity. And so for us, it's a chance to have um, the opportunity to share, you know, our town with an incredible array of people that we want to come back, not just for the month of May, but for every month in the year. Why don't you help make Main Street a destination? Because, come on, it's it's Speedway, Indiana, and you've got a go-kart track here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, Speedway, Indiana is, is much more than a go-kart track. There's, it uh, is. There's a lot of things to do here, and um, it's nice to be a big stakeholder in that and, and to drive um, some awareness to, to what Speedway can offer to people. and. You know, to have more people starting to come out and, and see the speedway and, and stick around to race a go-kart or have dinner you know somewhere on the street or 
um, you know, just spend time with us and learn about racing. I mean, it's on our quarter. Okay, I see several actual race cars around the track. Mm -hmm. uh, Dollar General, I know that was your car. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that uh, sprint car over there was yours too. Yeah, so <laughs> each each of the show cars that you see uh, in the building are, um, are unique in that I've, I've driven them all. <laughs> um, in fact, the one midget in the in the corner by the window is is my actual chili bowl midget. So I'm going to be taking that out of the building <laughs> come January, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. But um, then the blue Dryden midget with meat on it is the midget that I set the track record at Winchester with. So that's the actual midget. Um, the Smart Blade car that you see behind us is on loan from Dennis Reinbold. Um, that's the car that I set the track record at Kentucky and, uh, you know, was the first woman to podium and fastest woman at Indy, all those great things. Um, and then the car in the back that is the blue car is um, a car that is wrapped like the one that I drove for Derek Walker um, my rookie year. So the $67 general car in the middle of the track is the car that is uh, significant to, to the Sarah Fisher racing team um, that we started in 2008. So they all have something to do with, with the 15 years I was at Indy. Well, Sarah, I know you're busy. Thanks so much for taking the time out to sit with us and tell us a little bit about the go-kart track. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. If you've got a business you'd like to see on Welcome to Speedway, get all of us with the information at the end of the program. Thanks.